Who knows someone with autism? Uh, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, last week, I went uh, to a doctor. And uh, because I like uh, clarity, I told the doctor uh, to explain the examination process step by step because I have autism and like the clarity. And the doctor paused and looked me in the eye and just said, so you have autism? And I said, uh, yes, and I'm not deaf. <laughs> um, I have to take my cards. <laughs> It's clear to me that our society still has a uh, stereotypical image of autism. Because of the 1988 film Rayman, people who hear the, the word autism automatically think of someone with a lower uh, intellectual abilities, and people who cannot reach, and people who scream when the smoke detector goes off, and we instantly know the number of toothpicks that fallen out of a box or can even memorize the whole phone book. Uh, I'm not one of them. Do you know uh, someone with autism who does, uh, does these things? Okay. Uh, and the, the reality is uh, much different. There are um, two thirds of the people with autism, 1% of our population estimated, has a normal to high uh, abilities. And you know what? Most of them live amongst you. Uh, they have average jobs like postman or a, a designer or captain of a cruise ship or even a professional golfer. I know also software architects, uh, company, company directors, doctors, um, or people who contribute to society in another way. Well, I'm one of them. I was born in 1978 in a small Dutch village in, in Brabant. And my first link to autism dates back to what my parents told me. Um, as a child, I uh, used to move a lot in my bed. And one day, I was violently rocking uh, back and forth. And it caused the bed to stuck under the door handle. So uh, nobody could open it. And my father had to uh, borrow a ladder from neighbors and climb to the window and open it. Within the context of autism, this violently rocking back and forth should be uh, referred as stereotypical behavior. Um, I was raised in a structured family. My mother used to speak of uh, regrouping the house when she was cleaning. Both my um, grandfather and mother where uh, my grandmother and uh, mother were painters and have a huge amount of fantasy. And my father was a shoe salesman and he had a, the, he was capable of complete hyper focus to in doing everything he does. Love of structure, intense fantasy, and being fully hyper focused are linked to autism because to me they belong to the way I grow up. As a child, I was happy in my own world. I recreate elements from the real world, like muse museums and parades. I preferred playing indoors rather than outside with other children. I lacked the ability to tune my senses into the world I w which I was living. But I hit this perfectly with the help of knowledge and imagination. But however, the fear of losing and going mad was never far away. When I went to secondary school, I changed from a little village to a city. And I was bullied almost daily. And I had to run to get away safely from school. In a desperate attempt to express my feelings of unsafety, I started writing poetry when I was 14, 14 I wrote the following poem. Well, tomorrow I will jump in front of a train. I bet you all be singing. Mom, dad, and little brother, and you as well. You see, because who's happy with me? It didn't have the desired effect. I was hardly able to imagine that expressing myself in, in this way 
could cause others so much worry. I still find it very hard to appropriate to find a way to express my deepest emotion in an appropriate way. Um, so when I uh, was 16, I uh, had a mohawk and started using cannabis, uh, alcohol and medication and mixed them both uh, to a good mix in the hope that I would have a chance to expand my mind and help me gear myself to a world which I didn't understand. Well, I didn't open up, but uh, I still don't know which way to express my feelings. And that didn't have the desired effect. I started acting strange, stranger than I uh, usually was, and I felt scared. After graduating from um, art college, I lost completely my sense of stability. The next 10 years, following after that, can be best described by two words, underestimating, overestimating. During this period, I was uh, self-employed and was worked as a web and graphic designer. I was overestimated by myself and my environment. There were periods when I lose all my sense of reality and I need to spend several months in the institute. It caused people to underestimate me. When I was ready to leave, I had to work as a production uh, in the factory. But most important, this time, that was a time of loneliness. Not that I was literally alone, but I, I felt alone almost all of the time. And then in 2008, when I was 30, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a form of autism. The diagnosis gave me a clear, a clarity, but in hindsight, the diagnosis only proof, proved that the, and explained why I was falling more in my life than winning in my life. And after that long period of, of falling and getting back up, and trying to be normal, I was diagnosed as different. But all I wanted was to be normal. And I was, and still I am, different, but aren't we all? And the people around me, they knew also a different side of me. I could not have autism. I was uh, intelligent. Um, and while all others said, I have a, a light form of autism. You can be slightly pregnant, can you? You can slightly cut off your arm. Uh, and when I finally dared to speak about my problems, other people said, oh, we have that in, uh, all uh, now and again. But you know what? I can switch my autism off. It isn't, doesn't disappear. And science, <coughs> the hope. Science was very good in listing all the things that apparently was, I was unable to do. And according to many explanations in their literature, I lacked the abilities and skills to develop properly. And in the, then I heard in the Dutch news in 2012 an important Dutch psychologist, Ernst Ameling, alleged that Asperger's is an autistic disorder that is character characterized by lack of conscience. And according to him, as someone with Asperger's, I am the psychopath among the autistic community. <laughs> My apparent lack of conscience is due to the disorder itself, and I can be aggressive and violent as I like. And I don't give a damn. I am a monster, someone who's mentally ill and can be a member of normal society. This can be true, and I wanted to find out more. What did the social workers think about this? So I decided to become one. And in my study book, I read all kind of uh, strange things. For example, that um, people with autism, they don't want contact. 
and people with autism, they're licking always objects. And I was interviewed by four students, and they even asked me if I could brush my own teeth. I suddenly checked my breath. <laughs> and according to everything that I heard and read, I had a disorder. I had a disorder. Could it really be that disorder sell? Is there a market for disorders? Wait, there's even a national <laughs> autism week for myself and my species. A whole week of celebration. A week where we told uh, with a team like being different all your life. A week where we are told let them participate. A week where we color famous landmarks in blue light. Why are we wasting money on this and not using it to help directly people? And what about next year? What about next year? An Amsterdam Autism Parade? A whole boat full of people <laughs> labeled as different? Why are we constantly focused on differences and not on similarities? I'm not proud to be out. I'm Gijs. And that's difficult enough. And that's where equality between uh, you, you, you and me um, starts. The conclusion of my search after my diagnosis was that the map is not the territory. The menu is not the food. Not everything that is written about autism is really true. Science only proves the generalization of the behavior, the concept of autism. And real equality can be gained with a festive week. Equality begins with spoken words, because language expresses your experience. But how does language affect people? In 2012, I uh, helped to organize a meeting for people with autism uh, during the largest fun fair in Europe. And I was invited to walk around with a journalist. The balding journalist asked me if I also had the disorder. And I told the journalist, all bald men are impotent. <laughs> and he looked at me and he asked why I made that remark. And I started repeating the phrase, all bald men are impotent. And I I think he started to get irritated. So during the walk along the funfair, I repeated the phrase many more times. <laughs> and at the end of our walk, I asked him, what will you be thinking tonight when you get in your bed with your wife? And he said, all bold men are impotent. And I said, and that's exactly what the word disorder can do to someone with autism. The use of negative language cannot have a positive effect on your life. As long as science is unable to explain me exactly what autism is, I prefer not to use the word disorder in combination with autism. Where does it leave your opportunities to grow and develop if you assume you can do something? Real equality does not lie in extensive knowledge. Equality begins with the will to show interests in others, to my opinion. Dare to be curious what motivates someone with autism. What do you think the hysterical, typical image of autism does to a person? Because the map is not the real territory, and there's no such thing as the autist, if you see one person with autism, you see one person with autism. And when dis discussing the subject, I prefer to talk about people, people with autism, and not the autistic person. To me, attitude is more important than extended knowledge about autism. People are, are able to build bridges and understand each other via open dialogue. This is one of the conditions that enables people with autism to develop safely. And some of you may be still wondering what autism is. In my opinion, 
autism is a different way of processing images that enters via your senses. My views are based on the international accepted theory of geopsychologist Martina Del Vos that says that autism is not a defect, but rather a delay or acceleration in the way information is processed. In my opinion, a lack of social and cognitive cognitive skills, fixated interest, repeated behavior, and are the consequences of this different way information is processed, and not the autism itself. And I am personally regularly annoyed by the different way I, which I process my information. In other words, my autism. I sometimes have difficulty communicating, and often I stuck into my own structure. But that doesn't mean I have always problems in communication and going through life in inflexible. The difficulties that I have experienced because of my autism are directly related to the level of stress I have. So this means um, not much stress equals not much autism. But high level of stress equals a lot of autism. And I can tell you uh, one thing I learned from this, TED talk equals a lot of autism. <laughs> <laughs> People often say, you are so good in explaining your autism. Are you cured? No. <laughs> I still experience a lot of problems in my personal relationship. I am unable to find the right words because my feelings are too intense. And my own safe world, it, it still exists. My computer, my files, movies of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and I'm, I, I know a lot of people, but I only have a few, a real few friends. And every evening I take medication. And I always carry uh, emergency medication in my pockets. <coughs> and I often escape into my own world. And I... When I have extreme cases of stress, I bang my head like I did when I was young. Fortunately, there are many moments when I experience less stress and can lead my life. And I have made the conscious choice to have a positive attitude. This means falling and getting back up. I forced myself, I forced myself to take a positive look at the world. As a human being, as a trainer at Auticom, and I want to share this positive outlook. But also via the network uh, called Iets Drinken for people with autism. It's run by people with autism that I organized together with my friend Grody. I could talk for hours about being positive about autism, so I wrote a book, Plan B. But my message... I want to convey the message that even people with autism can learn, change and realize their potential. This will take a lot of effort and it won't happen by itself, but it's possible. In secondary school, I nearly, nearly always failed English tests, but look what I'm doing right now. I'm standing here today because I have a message and I hope that one day the, world, the word disorder will be deleted from books and systems. And we instead say human beings. Human beings with autism. I challenge you all to take a look at autism in a different way from now on. Autism is much more than stereotypes. Start looking at the similarities, not the differences. That's where equality begins between us. Thank you.